the sky By the sound of fire On the sky On the sky On the sky On the sky I'm a sumacol Il a me son metal By the sound of fire On the sky It's broken. The fellas nerve is broken. Yes, I'll help. It's in the name of the Lord. Yes, I'll help. Say, say, I'll help. It's in the name of the Lord. Through myself. There is a song coming for someone. It's not a worship song. I don't want to sing it because of time. It's trying. But it's a song for someone.
hands over the praises. Suffer thy foot, thy foot to move. The Lord that keep your feet, He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shield. Oh, Paul. Oh, now the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve our souls, even forevermore. Oh. says enter into his court with praise give the Lord a shout of praise hallelujah forgive me a course of time hallelujah because everybody Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, let me hear the ladies. Ladies, give the Lord a shout. Uh, gentlemen, give the Lord a shout. Yes. Lending you. Please have your seat. Say, hey, 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 Jesus, there you are, no. 
Jesus, hallelujah. At the mentioning of his name, every knee must bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus' name. Want to fall in love with Jesus this morning? Show him how much you love him. We're entering into the holies of holies. Picture him on his throne, kneeling before him and worshiping him than never before. He's been good to you. Do you agree? Jesus has been good to you. Holy name, oh how we wash, 
We worship before your throne. Oh Lord. Oh how we. Oh how we, oh, how we love you, Jesus. Oh how we praise. We praise your holy name. Oh how we worship. You've been good to us. You've been faithful, Lord. Oh, Lord. We bow before you, Jesus. Oh, how we worship. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Oh, how we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, how we worship you. With all our flaws, you still love us. Oh, Lord. Oh, From the bottom of our hearts, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we You've been so good to me. You've been so good to oh, me. Oh, oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we praise you, Lord. Oh, how we worship We worship you. We worship you. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, how we you Jesus. Oh, how we praise. Oh, we want to praise your holy name. Oh, how we worship. We worship, we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Come on, let's sing it together. Fall in love with Jesus. Oh, how we praise you. Come on, sing with me. Oh, how we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, Lord. I want to hear you sing this. Oh, I want to hear your voice. Come on, sing it to Jesus this morning. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've been doing. You've been doing for us, oh God. We say glory be to your name. Oh, how we, oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we praise you, Lord. Oh, how we worship We worship at your feet. We worship oh, you, Lord. Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Oh, how we praise. You've been faithful to us. You've been so good oh, to how us. We Receive your praise. Receive the glory. Oh, 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 how we love you. We love you, Lord. Oh, how we praise. We thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Our hearts cry. Be magnified in this your holy temple. In this your holy place. We will. To Zion's heights to praise and glorify you Come on, lift up your hands and give the Lord some worship right now this morning. Yes. Give the Lord your worship this morning. One of the things that you need to understand is you know, just put your hands down. Let me just speak to you a little bit and then we'll see what you will do and what God will do. And one of the things that I have recognized, people say, okay, who is Reverend Malkwe? Reverend Malkwe is a preacher. Not really. Because the truth of it is sometimes after I finish ministering and I go home and I listen to myself, I put the pillow over my head. Because of some things I say <laughs> and some things I do. My goodness. Then I ask, I ask my wife, did I say that? And then she said, are you asking me? 
<laughs> but if you ask me who I am, bottom line is, bottom line is I am a worshiper. That's, that's all I care about. I'm attracted to God's glory. I have, I have a desire for God's glory more than anything I can express. You'll find it in, my, in, my, in the songs I write. You'll find it in my sermons. You'll find it in the way I conduct myself. I'm in pursuit of his glory. Worship is, is everything for me. And worship is very important. Moses said something, and I, I understand him perfectly. When Moses said, when God said, you know, you just go out, send an angel with you. And he said, if your glory doesn't go with us, if you don't go with us, I, I'm not going. Moses was fully aware that just his presence is the game changer. How do you attract the presence of God? You attract the presence of God with your worship. Listen. No matter what you do, don't throw away your worship. Am I talking to somebody? Don't throw away your worship. Your worship is so powerful. Your worship is Sometimes your prayers are inadequate to produce the kind of results you want. I said, sometimes your prayers are inadequate to produce the kind of results that you want. Sometimes the results that you want, yes, pray. But prayer is just a foundational stone or the found, but it is worship that attracts the glory. The book of Revelations is quite clear on it. When he said, there was an angel and a golden censer was given to him and he collected incense. He added incense to the prayers of the saints. So when the saints pray, nothing happened until the angel added incense. It was the addition of incense that brought the thunder, the thunderings and the lightnings and the earthquake. Your worship, in addition to your prayer, will bring you results that will blow your mind. And that is why every time when we come here, I try to bring church, or I try to bring every listener of mine into his presence. Because your worship, and guess what? My worship creates a cloud over my head, a cloud of glory over my head. For me to be a beneficiary of that cloud, so does your worship. If you throw away your worship, you're making a big mistake. How many of people want to be worshippers this morning? Give him a wave offering. Our worship holds four things for us. And our worship isn't completed these four things. When we worship, we have not been forced. Our worship is our structure. It is not forced. It just flows from us. When we worship, it is our galbanum, that is, it is our brokenness. Not because of a nasty experience, but in his presence, we recognize that we are nobody. Tell somebody, don't be full of yourself. In his presence, tell the person, in his presence, you are just nobody. And then our worship is also our onisha. Worship brings us to the place of surrender. That's when we get fruitful. Our worship is our frankincense. That is, our worship is about Jesus. So when we come to worship, we worship. And all our songs and all everything that we do, He must increase, and we must decrease. Is that okay? Is that okay? Lift up your hands and begin to sing in the spirit right now. As if I can Sing in the spirit now. 
cry holy. We cry holy. We cry holy. We cry holy. Oh, holy. We cry holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God. Holy, 
Sit at your feet to be instructed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Your bigity 
must be characterized by your ability to worship. If you are a big person, you should be seen to be a worshiper. The Bible says in heaven, the four and twenty elders, they worship. So if you are a big person and you are not a worshiper, you are a vexation to the spirit. You are annoy a worshiper. So tell somebody, don't annoy me this morning. Hallelujah. What I can't stand is when I see, I go to churches and I see choir leaders worshiping or bringing people into worship and elders sitting down, checking their phones and when I climb the stage and I hold the microphone, I will float them shares. They have to be shareholders of my anger. My righteous anger. If you are a big person, show us your bigity by your worship. The four and twenty elders, they worship. You. I'm not even a messenger. You are not even a multi-millionaire. Or you are from the way. And you don't want to worship. Tell somebody, show your class with your worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophetic events and prophetic places or prophetic seasons and prophetic timings are not only the sole prerogative or the sole preserve of God's intervention of God. God doesn't totally own everything in your prophetic season or prophetic event. God doesn't own it. When I say that, people get offended. But if it's a prophetic thing, it's a divine transaction. But God doesn't own every single event. There is a portion that is left out. And that portion can either be filled by humanity or by Satan. If Satan visits heaven during a worship moment, a secret place like heaven. And according to Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, when the sons of God came to present themselves, Satan also visited. If the enemy can visit heaven in a divine moment of worship, powerful moment of worship, where the Bible says angels are falling flat on their faces. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, when you are even worshiping, you are like a tree stump. But in the worship in heaven, angels are falling flat on their faces. Moment of power and moment of God's glory, the devil goes visiting. So profound moments in your life, profound powerful moments in your life, God doesn't hold total exclusivity to those moments. Yes, he designs it, but the enemy can visit that occasion in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? The enemy can visit your glorious moment. So your moment of celebration, your moment of happiness, your moment of joy can also receive a visitation by the enemy. And that is why Jesus' moment of power when, he had, when the heavens had, had opened, when the voice of God had spoken and, and the voice of God had rung out and, or, or ballooned into, into the system. Because for God to speak, for everybody to hear, this is my beloved son. He, he billowed out his voice. And the Bible says, in his voice is thunder and lightning. So you can imagine, God's voice is not like my voice. God's voice was filled with power and God threw out his voice. He threw out his voice 
And his voice was loud and clear. And also the spirit of God. All the time, there has, people have not yet seen manifestation of the spirit of God. They have just felt the manifestation of the spirit of God. All throughout that time, and the Bible says, and the spirit moved. And the spirit moved. And the spirit moved. But it was that time that they saw a manifestation, a physical, not just, not, not just something happening, not just a brush of the wind, but they, felt, they saw a, a dove descending. And from that time onwards, we gave the, the symbol of a dove to the Holy Ghost. So until that time, we didn't have a symbol for him. But it was that time that we gave him a symbol. So now when you go to some churches, you see everything, then you see dove. But God is not Oko. But these are just symbols to demonstrate his peaceful nature. And when he comes. But it's also a demonstration of his power. Because he doesn't just come and sometimes you see people put light around him. And they'll put sun rays. But at that moment, that was when the enemy also took Jesus to a high mountain. So the devil is not intimidated by your glorious moment. In fact, he is attracted to your glorious moment. Your glorious moment is attractive to the enemy because that's the time he wants to interfere. That's the time he wants to intervene. That's the time he wants to, he wants to uh, mess up. Your glorious moment. So your moment of celebration, the enemy will throw things. Sometimes he will come physically. Sometimes he will speak through the medium of humanity. So Jesus is receiving hosannas, but in the hosannas are enemy activity of people saying, stop the hosanna. And the purpose of the enemy visiting your glorious moment is to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your song. He wants to destroy your joy and happiness. And he wants to destroy your destiny. So the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's why, that's why your glorious moment would always receive satanic visitations or satanic interference. And that is why you always have to be on the lookout. I don't say be Satan conscious or be demon conscious, but be aware. According to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, it says be sober and be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, prowls about seeking whom he might devour. Once there is enemy activity, we are not occupied by enemy activity. It said that even if a house fly comes by your house, or a house fly comes to visit your food, which you have left open, then he said it's a sign for prayer binding and pray. The house fly will still be. Because that's not a demon. And I know that sometimes, I mean, people are teaching, but I'm not going to go into this today. Listen, fallen angels are not ambassadors of God. I said fallen angels are not ambassadors of God. So don't say we worship fallen angels. They were a rebellious lot who were thrown out of heaven and they fell to the earth. And the Bible said, woe to the earth. So their presence in, on earth is trouble. So those tribes who say fallen angels are these things, what Jema won, that we should worship, they are fallen angels. They are rebellious personnel who were rejected from heaven. And their presence here on earth is not to bring peace and goodwill, but woe. Let's move on. So if you hear some teachings, balance it. Now, satanic moment, satanic involvement in your victory song is to take something away from you. And like I said, what you say 
what you think and what you do determines where you go, the next level. And we, we have a picture of a man called Elijah. And he's, 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 he's uh, uh, what, what do we call it? Elijah's life story is the picture that will present principles for us. So the picture that presents principles, because anytime you look at the Bible, there's a picture. And out of that picture, you can pick principles. Now, some of you are so interested in the revelation of the, of the scripture, you have not yet captured the picture. Don't read the Bible because I want revelation. I want revelation. No. Get the picture first. And then revelation will follow later. Amen. Am I saying something sensible? So there are people, there are young people walking around and they are obsessed with, I want a revelation. So when they pick the Bible, no, I want a revelation. That's not how to read the Bible. That's not how to get the story. Get the picture. When you're walking and the picture, meditate upon the picture. Then as you're walking with the picture, then when something will happen, then God will bring, bang, you throw light on the picture that you have. You can't pick the meaning of an art, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the art, what do you call that kind of art, abstract art. You can't pick the list of abstract art and then just when you see it, no, you are not, no. Sometimes you need to get closer. Look at it. Look at it. Then you see a human head popping somewhere in the picture with, oh. They say, ah, oh, that's the mouth. But if you stand afar off, you may not understand it. Get the picture. And when you get the picture, you'll get the principle. Hallelujah. Now, so we are looking at Elijah as a picture. And out of Elijah's life, we're going to look at the principle or the principles that are invested in an event in his life. Prophetic event in his life. And we have already captured it in 1 Kings chapter 19. And we are reading from 3 to 6. 1 Kings chapter 19, 3 to 6. We have been on this particular lesson for a couple of weeks. That's Reverend Marquis for you. I want to make sure that when I pick a scripture, I have rightly divided it. Because in rightly dividing it, I can get it. So, I will look at it this way, look at it that way, turn it this way and turn it that way. Make sure that, and even sometimes after I've turned it, I'll go back to it again and say, I didn't see this. That's our revelation. There is a river whose streams thereof. In thy light, we shall see light. So, in revelation... There are more revelations. Okay. And when he saw, so let's all read it together because second service people, some of you have started dozing already. Amazing. So push to somebody by your side and said, Oh, what? Oh, Dana. Dana, how? What could you say? And now, what could be to Zafi? Or what could be Banchi? And now, what could Noom Upper Prancer? Huh? Upper Prancer? Yeddy. What could Noom Upper Prancer? Oh, God. How can I be making these mistakes <laughs> for enemies of, of righteousness? <laughs> what could dear Papa Sana? Ah. It's coming. Up. So let's all read it together so that we don't sleep. Okay, now let's all stand and read it. Because the reading of his word, let's, let's all stand and read. I'm standing, then you are sitting. <laughs> so let's all read it together. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Besheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. All right. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down 
under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Here ends our reading. <laughs> Please be seated. Charlie, those churches do their lines, though. There's some sanctimonious this thing about them. Charismatic, everything. What you say? Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. See? Some of you don't know. Because you have never been to church before. You don't go to Presby. You have never been to Presby. You have not even been to Aladura. You have not been to nowhere. Ask them, what was your former church? Ask them, what was your former church? <laughs> Living streams. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You remind me. I don't. I don't. Who do you say? My hair comedies. Now we're seeing our coffee. Yes, sir. And you. Men, yes, sir. I. Mekan, hallelujah. Mekan, amen. Na ye ni na ya 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 kabom. Na ye 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 be ye be ye be sumnya me we on. Good Lord, why is this tree so difficult? <laughs> it's not there. Eh? You to speak gun. You to speak gun. I mean, you to speak gun. Hallelujah. Elijah, what he said, what he thought, and what he did becomes principles for us to look on. Now, what you say, what you do, what you think, God doesn't just leave you within that space. But sometimes God decides to invade your space of depression. I said, God visits or invades your space of depression, your space of despondency. God sometimes doesn't just sit back there and look at you. He says, let me invade that person's presence. Let me invade that person's narrative. Let me invade that person's situation. So guess what? So Peter is a failure and he's just mending his nets. Then God invades. Hey, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in the fire and God invades. Do you understand what I am saying? The disciples, Jesus was dead and they had barricaded the doors. They had shut the doors and all they were doing, they were just sitting down pondering and then he doesn't knock. He doesn't knock. It's not always that God comes knocking. Sometimes he will, he will just invade it. And he didn't knock. He didn't go through the door. They were just there and all, then he just appeared. And he doesn't just invade for, for this thing. He invades to stand in the middle of the crisis. He invades to stand in the middle of the situation. And all he's trying to say is, uh, let me be the center of this event in your life. So God invades to be at the center. So that the Bible says, and when Jesus invaded that particular room in which they had locked up and everything, shut the windows, the Bible says, and he stood in their midst. So he stood in there, this thing and says, now everybody look at me. So God then says, everybody look at me. And that is the same way in which there's a blind man at the temple gate. Or there's a blind man yeah, at, the, at the temple, this, this thing. And then that man is, is begging, is that a blind man or a lame man? Lame man, sorry. 
There's a lame man at the temple gate. And that man is burned. Then Peter goes there and says, I'm invading your situation and your narrative. And when Peter stands there, he says, look on me. Let me get your attention. And when God gets your attention, something will change. And therefore he says, silver and gold have I none. But what I have, get up and walk. And that's what happened. So God invades the depressive moment. God invades your bad situation. As you leave this place, may there be a divine invasion in any circumstances in which you find yourself. May God invade your finances that are going down. May God invade your marriage that is in trouble. May God invade any situation concerning you that is going on, that is contrary. May God invade every contrary wind in your life in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and say, God, please invade. God, please invade. So God invades the And this is how he does it. When he comes, he brings a cake. He brings coals. And he brings a cruise of water. So cake, coals, and cruise of water. Tell somebody, blessed CCC. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cake he brings. The coals he brings. And the crews he also brings. We have treated the cake. So let's look at the, the coals. And in looking at coals, we need to be guided by certain events in scripture. That teaches us. The power of the coals. You know, sometimes somebody will say, you, I heap coals of fire upon your head. Have you heard that thing before? Tell somebody, I pop coals upon your bosom. You're not cursing the person. If the person, what, what I just blessing someone. When I finish explaining, you understand? Say, I pour coals upon your head. May you receive coal. Say it powerful. You are prophesying. Oh. And then place your hand upon your head and said, Upon this head. Upon this head. There shall be coals. There shall be coals. Remember that when God came to town, he placed the, uh, the, co- the cake and the coals by the head of Elijah. In the name of Jesus, may you also receive coals. Amen. Jesus. Now let's go and visit the coals. John 21. John 21, from verses 3. John 21. I won't mention his name. Remove your, his name there and put your name there. So, put your name there. Don't put my name there. Your congregation member saith unto them. Let's all read it together. It's very powerful. I want to hear your name. Obey. I want to hear your name. Otherwise, I ask you to stand up. (laughs) All under the anointing. (laughs) So let's all read it together. Unto them. I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, no, stress the children, it's very important. Children, oh please, stress it as a children. I can't hear it loudly. There's a revelation there. Hey, there's a blessing there. That's why I'm saying, you, you, say it loudly. Children. Have you any meat? 
They answered him, no. Then Jesus said unto them, oh, no, children, have you any meat? They said, no. Let's go to the next thing. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the sheep, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciples whom Jesus loved, uh, that disciple, sorry, whom Jesus loved, saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now say that the way I'm saying it. It is the Lord. No, say it properly. Do it the way I'm doing it. It is the Lord. No, do it like you are quarreling with somebody. It is the Lord. Now say it again to the pen. Oh, I don't like some of your gestures. You are doing yourself like as if you were your pity. Say it powerfully. Like a gamma will say, oh, 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 now, let's all say it that way again. Say to someone, I want to, uh, I'm coming down. If you are not doing it, my sermon will be for you. I will stand in front of your face and preach. Let's all say, as I didn't say, 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 do it like that. Let's all do it together. Peter, I've not seen you for a long time. Why? Huh? You went to school. Okay. Is your girlfriend around? Or she has left you. <laughs> you are too spiritual, that's why. Some of you young men, you don't know how to propose to girls. You don't know how to change. You go and stand there and say, hey, hey, hear the voice of the Lord. I, the Lord, am moving. You marry me, marry me. We are quite You have to wrap her. Talk about her hair style. Even though you know it is a wig. So let's all say it again. Now let's read it. <laughs> Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he got his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land. But as it were, 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a, a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, bring up the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes. And hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Now I'll end here. Powerful things over there. And before I even come to the coast, let me just give you a little bit of what is happening there. God had met Peter many years ago. Or a couple of months ago. About three years ago. And Jesus had met him when he was a failed fisherman. And Jesus had given him a great drought of fish. Now when Jesus dies, look at what Peter said. I go a fishing. Tell somebody, I go a fishing. And then the Bible said, others too said, we are also going. Number one, influences. There are some bad people or there can be bad people in the congregation of the righteous. We have people sometimes in, in, in a company, in, in a corporate world, in this thing. They are bad people. They are influencers. They wield influence. They say and people follow them. They do and people follow them. They crack a joke which is not even pleasant. Everybody laughs. They are bad people in the house. And sometimes there are influences. They can be in the choir. They can be in protocol. They can be in, 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 in leadership. 
They can be in, in, in your executive committee, in your finance board. There are bad people, there can be bad people there who influence people to do the wrong thing. Whereas, there was a bad woman who met Jesus, but she was an influencer. And she said, I have influenced men to do the wrong thing. I am now going to the city to influence men to do the, 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 the right thing. I have influenced men to do the wrong thing. So the woman in John chapter 4, the woman of Samaria went to the city and she said to the men, to her customers, she said, come and see. Come and see, oh, come and see. The man who has told me everything about my life since the day I was born. And in my, my interpretation, she visits this man and says, come and see. The man who has asked me to do everything, who has told me everything I've done since the day I was born. Then the man will say, no, no, he said, I will tell your wife what you and I did. Then the man said, let's go, let's go. All the men of the city followed her. And after they had seen Jesus, they even told the woman, we now believe not because of what you told us, but we now believe because of what we have seen. Here was a woman who was an influencer. Now, Sambala, Tobias, they were also influencers. And some of us, God has given us the ability to influence people. So that when you speak, people listen. When you speak, people, people, people listen. Give them a prayer topic, they'll, they'll do it, even though they don't want to pray. And instead of influencing them for the right thing, Peter influences people. He said, I go fishing. And they said, we are also going. If you are an influencer in the house, and you use the power that God has given you to work against the house. May God remove you. May God take you away. Not take you away from the church. Hello? Go to heaven before your time. You are better off that way. And I have seen in the house, sometimes there are, there are all in, in companies. Look, I have been in a situation where somebody made the whole school go on a looter. And very few people know who caused it. He just didn't want to eat kenki. Or he just didn't want to eat, you see, the gaso. So we go to the dining hall and he looks at the gaso. And then he says to somebody, Charlie Mene Woye, today won't eat. And then he passes on, Charlie, Charlie, we have to do something. Charlie Woye, Woye. Before we all could say Jack, all of us were chanting, Woye, 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 Woye. Then he said, quietly, he said, Charlie, let, let, Charlie, let's move, let's move. So we all followed the leader. And then he said, break glasses. People were breaking glasses and people were this thing. You know what? People were caught breaking glass. He never broke a glass. Other people were arrested and given to the police. He was never part of it. He's an influencer. There are influencers in the house of God. Shall we pray? Right now we are praying too much. Let's go. Let the choir go and do something. And I think that we are, we are being overused. Should I float to the chairs? <laughs> Young boy, you are not even 40. And you said you are, you are tired in the house of God. We who are 60 plus, we are doing first service, second service. On Sunday, 
I'm going to join FM at four in the morning. And then from there, I'm coming to the house. Like today, like this, first service, second service, somebody is doing his wedding party, wants me to come and pray. But I'm not going. Come to my bread. But sometimes we leave home and still ministry continues. Ministry continues. At one time, I was doing five services a week, a, a, a day. At one time in church, I'll come for first service. I'll go to Legon. Then I'll go to Latabi Okoshi. Then I'll come to Teshin. Then I'll come here. So count the services. First service here. Second service in Legon. Third service in Latabi Okoshi. Fourth service in Teshin. And then fifth service. I'm coming to do second service here for feet, but it's my feet service. Sometimes we'll finish service, and when we get home, I'm holding the, the, the fork with the, with the rice in it. And I'm gone. And in the days of your youth, you, you are saying you are tired. Be tired. God will also get tired. Influences. Peter said, I go a fishing and everybody followed him. Use your influence to bring people closer to God, not to walk away from the principles of God. You're an influencer, so when you go to a party, all the people are watching you. Once you say, Charlie, give me strong drink, they also follow. Influencer. Because these days when they go to parties, they'll say, make it this thing and add weed. And the influencer, because you're an influencer, when the people see you drinking, they said, oh, this person is also drinking. So, they will drink and they will add the weed and then they start misbehaving. Wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived by it is not wise. Influencer. They said, Charlie, Tommy taught. Then everybody on the table too say, Tommy taught. So all of them become totes. <laughs> Influencer. He said, Shall we come for prayer meeting? And then he said, Me, I can't come home. Then you see, ripple effect. What kind of influencer are you? That is, you influence decisions and you influence people. Peter said, I go a fishing, and all those people followed him. So God has given you leadership ability. And instead of using that leadership ability for the glory of God, you use the leadership ability to countermand God's commands. You use that influence to obstruct leadership's progress. <laughs> you use that, that influence that power of influence that you have negatively against the house of God, against your corporation, against your workplace, against leadership, against the company. May God have mercy on your soul. That is why now turn to somebody and tell the person, it is the Lord. And Peter said, I go a fishing and everybody followed him. But guess what? They toiled all night and caught nothing. If you follow somebody and you have followed that person and you have done what should not be done, look at the results. Look at the results. If the results don't tally, leave the person. Tell the person, carry your trouble, go. The Bible says they are told all night. When you follow negative people, you will sweat. You will labor and nothing will happen. You will be pregnant to the good things of God, but you abort them. Full of potential, but never able to come to it in anything. I know when we were kids, when we went to secondary school, there were influencers who were teaching people to smoke, and they were teaching people to drink, and they were teaching people to go to prostitutes. Some of them have died by HIV.
influencers. Ask somebody, do you, will you lead me to do the right thing or you lead me to do the wrong thing? And see, when you, when you lead people to do the wrong thing, you will toil all night and catch nothing. And you, the person following, you will be, listen, you can sometimes be a beneficiary of somebody's foolishness. And I don't mean positive beneficiary and negative beneficiary. These were people who should not have been there. So they had their sweat and they had their toil. But because they were not doing something that they should be doing, they caught nothing. Until, until God invades that particular thing. So sometimes in your company, watch out for influences. Watch them in your shop. In your, in, in your office. Watch out for them. They are rubber rousers. They can raise a riot right now. When there's a, they are in the choir. They are in protocol. Before you realize. They start the gossip. They start the gossip. They start the memory. They start, it always starts from them. Twelve spies were sent out. Ten came back and they were influencers. And they influenced the whole of Israel so that God gets angry and God says, I want to destroy these people. The Bible says they toiled and caught nothing. Then Jesus came and said, oh, let down your net on the right side. Tell somebody on the right side. Hey, if you walk on the right side, you will catch a great drought of fish. Sometimes we don't get what we want from God because we are on the left side. We are at the wrong side. We are at the side we shouldn't be. But if you walk on the right side, when we walk on the right side, and the right side is not dictated just by left or right, but it's dictated by his word. Jesus said, the word said, turn to the right side and when they turn to the right side then they got what they wanted Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 teaches us how to be on the right side take a look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 some are dozing so let's stand and read when I'm preaching blessing you won't sleep when I'm preaching instruction then you will sleep let's all read it together this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So can I tell you, when you walk on the right side of the word, the word will bring prosperity. When you walk on the right side of the word, hey, you get, you go further. When you get the right side of the word, you will have the right success. In the name of Jesus, may somebody move from the left side and begin to look at the right side. You have been looking in the right side, Jesus. on the wrong side for too long. Turn to the right side. In the name of Jesus, Amen. lift up your right hand and say, I'm on the right side. On the right side. I'm on the right side. Jesus. The word brings us back to the right side. And you know something? The, the fish was just around. He said, we have got nothing. But the fish was around. What you are looking for is around. In the name of Jesus, name of as Jesus. you lift up your right hand, Abadora. I see a people Jesus. who are now about to step Amen. on the right side. May you begin to have the harvest. Makadur. May you begin to have the harvest. Le Come on, open your mouth and pray. Le I need to be on the right side. Yes. I need to be on the right side. Right side of the world. Right side of the world. I need to be on the right side. When I am on the right side, I will cut a great part of fish. I will cut a great part of fish. Let my spirit to be released. May glory be released. May wealth be released. On the right side. 
We have the right side of God. Rebellion is not the right side. Rebellion against God's word. Rebellion against authority. It's not the right side. It's not the right side. Do you remember? When that young boy was playing around you and your mother looked at you and your mother said, I don't trust this boy. Do you remember? But because you have seen something. Sit down, let's talk. I said, where will we be? Because you have seen something. When your mother told you not to do it, he said, you will do it. Fire go burn you. There are three ways in which a man will look at a woman. We look at you from here. We look at you from there. We look at you. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. He said, I should talk to them. He's telling you that his arm is dangerous. See, here, there, there. We look at you by the power of your intellect. By the power of the, of, the, of the intelligence you spew out. That is why it is good to be intelligent. That means wise. Don't be daft. When your wife says pot, then you, when your husband says, oh, bring me the pot. Now, pot, who's the mean kofa, sika, and ubra? Pot is not sika, it's not cutlass. Pot is pot. And your chin, see? Domot. Free advert. She should bring me tithe. The man looks at you with powerful intelligence. That is why sometimes. Ladies, be intelligent. We look at you there. You see, they are quiet. They don't want me to tell you their secrets, but it's true. Then we look at you from the heart. What kind of person are you? What kind of character are you? Are you hospitable? Are you, are you kind? Are, are you charitable? Are you patient? We look at you from the heart. Then, tin tin, tin tin ni ni, tin tin. Oh, what, what are you saying? What I say is not true. It's in the Bible. The Bible says, Samson said to his father and his mother, take her for me, for she pleases me well. The reason why Samson wants to get married is pleasure. Let me say it again. I said, the reason why Samson wants to get married is pleasure. Pajo is giving me funds for me to stop. <laughs> so you two, if you don't find out why they are coming around you, and as for you, your song is, you give yourself away so that they can use you. Because after pleasure, the Bible said Amnon was so much in love. Sometimes when they say they are in love and they are dying and they are love sick, it is not love sick, it is lust sick. Amnon couldn't eat because of Tamar. And the day he got Tamar, the Bible said after he had finished, he looked at her and said, ah, is this what I have been looking for? And he threw her away. And the love and the, the hatred with which he hated her was more than the love with which he loved her. So sometimes after they have gotten you, then they begin to maltreat you. Then they begin to do things to you. Uh -huh. 
So, this year, we are pata. We are, we are pata. We are Kobe. Oh, God. Am I teaching you something? Refuse to be somebody's pleasure pot so that he'll come and urinate and walk away and then go to another place and urinate and then go to another place and urinate. You are more than that. You are a powerful person fashioned in the image of God wonderfully and craftily and wonderfully and what? Beautifully made. Don't allow somebody to be you to be the person's pleasure for you are more quiet. Look at her, the way you are sitting. Beautiful girl. Nice. Look at you. Everything of your hey. We are shepherds. I don't know what that means. Now I found Mark was No, 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 we're here. Not In the name of Jesus, forsake him and look for somebody else. Hallelujah. They have followed Peter and caught nothing. And then Jesus came to town and he said, he's on the right side. When you launch onto the right side, when you walk on the right side, when your mother was telling you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And you still went ahead and did it. And after you did it, and he too, he has did it. Then you are now seeing the did it. And the did it is making you did it cry. In the name of Jesus, may God guide your feet from the wrong side. May God guide your feet from the left side. May God plant your feet on the right side. In the name of Jesus, as you lift up your right leg and place it down and say, I'm on the right side. May the harvest be May the harvest come in the name of Jesus because you're on the right side. Go from your chair. Take a right step and say, I'm on the right side. Open your mouth and pray right now. I'm not going to walk on the wrong side anymore. I'm not going to walk on the wrong side anymore. I'm going to the right side. I want to be on the left side. I want to be on the right side. The right side brings the house. The right side is principal. The right side. I'm on the right side. Please be seated. Jesus. As for God, even when we are on the wrong side, He will still come and visit. He will still come and visit. So you know what? Jesus, He has patience. God, he has patience. If I were Jesus, they will be on the, on the surface of the water. And I'll even command water to block them from coming to land. They should stay there. And they should toil. And they should toil all night. And add all day. Then I'll be here, I'll be saying, I'll be sitting there and say, boys, I'll breath. But Jesus comes visiting. Even when we are on the wrong side. And this is how he comes to visit. The Bible says he comes to visit. Number one, with his word. So this morning I also bring you a word. For you to be on the right side. And he doesn't only bring word. He says to them, sit down. He says, I'll give you a harvest that you have never had before. 
And you see, the first time Peter caught a great drought of fish, they didn't qualify the type of fish. They said he just caught a great drought of fish. Is it true? And his net broke. But this time, the Bible said they caught 153 fish, but they were very big. But they were very big. Hey, God bring you from Keta School Boy Harvest to Harvest of Chile, hey. Harvest of, 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 of uh, uh, Shoi, Harvest of you. You see, there are different fishes in the name. Uh, some call uh, Keta School Boys. They call them Wovi. If you are going to Akosombo, they sell them on the, this thing. Uh, what do you call them too? Eh? One man thousand. Sometimes you are even chewing stones. When you take them, you see that. But there is a type of fish when they bring it from the sea. You see, when you go to parties, that is what they lay. And then five, ten people can cut but there's still some around. In the name of Jesus, name may of God Jesus. bring you from the little harvest Jesus. to the powerful Amen. harvest, the present harvest, Amen. the bigger harvest, Amen. the weightier harvest. Amen. May what you have received, Amen. may you receive something much In more weightier than what you have. The Bible said, I has not seen nor ear heard what he has in store for the people of God. You think you are rich? Get ready. Amen. Amen. You think you are prosperous? Get ready. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. You think you have it all? Get ready. Go from your chair. Look at someone and say, you, get ready. You, get ready. Bigger, 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 bigger. I said bigger, 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 bigger. bigger, 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 bigger. In the name of Jesus. In the name of May Jesus. God surprise you with the Amen. bigger. May God surprise your accounts. Amen. May God surprise your finances In the name of Jesus. with the bigger. With the weights here. Ah. With the ones that have weights. Amen. With the ones that have weights. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And this time, may you never lose the harvest. Amen. May you never lose the harvest. Amen. I prophesy. In the name of Jesus. May you won't lose the harvest. Amen. Because ah. you are on the right side. Hey. You will not lose the harvest. Amen. You are on the right side. Amen. You won't lose the harvest. Amen. You are on the right side. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And after Jesus, he said, bring some of the fish. Giving to God is not a crime. As I lift up my right hand, there is a wave Of a huge harvest. Amen. Our nets will not break. Amen. I prophesy it. In the name of Jesus. For those of you who are listening to me through the sound of technology, the tubes of technology, let it be your God. There's a harvest that is coming. Amen. That is bigger. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Because you're obeying my word. Amen. And Jesus said, Bring some of the fish. Hey! Bring some to God. Jesus. Bring some to Him. Jesus. Don't be selfish. Hey! Bring some to him. Ah. Because there's something he's going to give to you. And the Bible said, when they came, they found that he had fish that was on the coals. And not just fish, but he also had what? But he also had what? But he also had what? I declare in the name of Jesus, that when we walk on the right side, God brings us to the coals. Jesus. God brings us to the fireside. Ah. And at the fireside, hey. he will revive your dreams. Hey. He will revive your prayer life. Hey. He will revive your finances. Jesus. He will revive everything. Hey. And not only that, hey. but he will add more. Hey. He will add more. Hey. Hey. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus. We are in the zone of the mall. Hey. We are in the arena of the hey. mall. Hey. May God add more. Hey. He asked for fish, but he'll give you bread too. God will give you Jara. In the name of Jesus, I sense an anointing 
for Jarrah and anointing for more. May your harvest be more. May there be more. Because you have come to the fireside. By the fireside. By the fireside. By the fireside. By the fireside. May there be more. May there be more. May there be more. May you never lose. May you never lose. May there be more. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. When God brings us to the fireside, He only comes to bring us more. Let's all read it carefully, powerfully, shouting it. Let's all read it. Now, unto Him that is able to do. To do Hey, God do it to God do it to God do it to do it to God do it to do it to God do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life oh Lord do something new in my life, something new. In my life, something new. In my life, they went for fish. When God brought them to the coast of fire, there was fish and there was bread. Turn to someone and say, "More is coming. More is coming." I can't hear your, pro your prophetic declaration. I am in the arena for more. My story is not over. I am not a loser. Coasts hey. have been brought to you. Amen. So that there will be more. In the name Amen. of Jesus. There will be more. Hey. There will be more. Your dream hey. that you thought Jesus. was dead. Jesus. Ah. More. more. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. When they met, the enemy met Joseph. And said, the dream, I will go kill him. And then we'll see what will become of his dreams. By his dreams, somebody else dreams. Pharaoh also dreams. And he gets the blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. your dream is not dead. Amen. The idea is not dead. Amen. You are still in the game. Oh. Amen. And he has coming through. Yeah. He is coming through Amen. with more. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Give us Let the dew of heaven bring us Let my hands bring us Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. So I Open your mouth and pray. So Let that be a revival in your prayer life. Let that be a revival in your dreams. Let that be a revival in your finances. Let that be a revival in your marriage. Let that be a revival. Let us be open doors. More, 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 Open your mouth and pray. Do you want to pray? Open your mouth and pray. Sit up your right hand and pray right now. 
Say to God, I am here. I am here. Say to God, I am here. Let the tones. Let the tones. Let the tones of fire. 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 What put the hands of fire? for the many voices that you are hearing is the fact that the man preaches his life. This is not something he read in a book or it's not a sermon he listened to. The Bible said an extra purpose in his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it and to teach it. And that is the life of this man. He has studied, he has been through his teaching. Can we celebrate him? Appreciate him. It makes him very unique. It makes him very rare. It makes him very... Oh, celebrate the man of God. Life-changing, transforming world, revelatory truths. Oh, celebrate him. Do it better for him. Do it better for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Daddy, that was very powerful. God bless you for every Wednesday, Sunday, bringing us timeless truths, revelatory truths. Oh, I appreciate the man of God one more time. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Be seated for one second. Now, I realize that when it comes to giving in the house of God, God has specifications, God has requirements. God does, doesn't just accept anything. He said to Abraham, say, Abraham, give him your son. And he was specific. He said, Isaac, your only son, whom thou lovest. I want to encourage somebody, when you are coming to the house of God, you are bringing an offering. Don't just take anything and bring it. You have to give something that God will love. You have to give something that is specific, that is a requirement. So I encourage you from today, if you can even pray over your offering on Saturday so that God will direct you. If it is 10 Ghana that you bring every Sunday, you have to encourage yourself. You have to, you know, lift up yourself and say that today I want to give 50, I want to give 100, I want to give 200 and see what God will do. It is a time of sacrifice. 
The messages that Papa is preaching in the house, it is not time to give normal offerings. You have to shift some gears and invoke the blessing of God by force. If you believe, then why don't you take out your offering? You want to take out that seed, believe God. Believe Hello, people of God. Thank you for joining church. Today is the last day in the month of July. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining the people of Yenta Church. On behalf of our general overseer and head pastor, Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway and Reverend Dr. And Mrs. Davina Markway, thank you for joining church today. Here are a few announcements. Monday evening prayer meetings happen here at 6.30 p.m. And Prayer Connect happens online from 4.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So join us as we pray for the church. Life cells are the basic units of LSI. At Life Cell, we build a healthy community and we do life together. So if you don't belong to a Life Cell, kindly pick up a sign up form from the information desk and a Life Cell leader will surely reach out to you. Life Cell happens every Tuesday at 7 pm sharp. Are you missing your Life Cell meetings? Are you a stay at home mom or a student on holiday? We are introducing Thursday lunchtime live sale. Register at the front desk or call Auntie Ajoa on 0244 487 026. 0244 487 026 or Irvin on 0549 256 565. 0549 256 565. Join us make new friends and enjoy insightful discussions life cell living in fullness every day the god way midweek service is getting more and more powerful join us this wednesday for teaching service with our papa reverend dr ebenezer markway for which he has declared power wednesday nights and pronounce restoration and refreshments upon our lives don't miss these powerful services the time is at 6.30 p.m. sharp here at the Life Cathedral. Remember to come with your oil, an expectation, and the belief that God can turn your life around. Amen. 30 more days to our young adults and teens come and count 2022. Yeah. It's time for our generation and the next to take over. Hence, our theme this year is raising generations who value marriage, are successful entrepreneurs, and principal leaders. Encounter Camp is happening from the 1st to the 4th of September, and it's a cool 500 CDs per head. If you haven't registered, hurry! The deadline for registration is the 21st of August 2022. You can register as soon as possible at the lot stand outside. Don't miss Encounter 2022. The Lost Family Fun Day is here! That's right! Next Sunday, the Lost Fun Fair is happening here live. It's a special fundraiser fun fair for our Encounter Young Adults and Teen Camp. So after the second service, buy yourself some coupons and enjoy giant outdoor games, bouncy castles, finger licking burgers, four use, mini pancakes, mocktails, from friends, from the loves bar, anything at all. Good music from our favorite DJ and many more. So invite all your friends, come with your purses full, dress down, ready to play, have fun and relax. If you want to be a vendor on the day, kindly see Lois or Cordai. Don't miss out on the fun. The loft transformed to transform. And finally, Laboni Secondary Outreach is today. The time is 5 p.m. The bus will leave here at 4 p.m. Join us to spread the good news to every young adult worldwide. See you there. If you're watching us for the first time, we would love to connect with you and get to know you more. To reach us, follow us on Instagram at Live Cathedral and send us a DM or call on our hotline, the number below.
Now, let's welcome our visitors and first timers. If today is your first Sunday with us, kindly give us a wave. Kindly rise. Let's clap. A member of the Connect team will escort you to our lounge. We would like to refresh you and have a conversation about LSI. Thank you for coming. We hope you have been blessed. During the week, catch more of Papa Sermons on Sunny 88.7 FM from Monday to Friday at 7.45 a.m. On City 97.3 FM on Sundays at 6.30 a.m. And on YouTube at Graphic Online from Monday to Friday. Also, don't hesitate to share the link on your WhatsApp stories. God bless you and thank you for your attention. My name is Sofia Minka Premo and I have been your announcer for today. This is Lady.